Hello and welcome to the show. Now, the world of property provides an excellent environment that's ever-changing and it fascinates us both. Yeah, there's always one key message though, get the best deal possible but it's not always as easy as it seems. Yes, but there is one place you still might have a chance of doing that. That's your local property auction. Auction is a very popular way to approach things. Every month, millions of pounds worth of property is sold at auctions. So with all that auction action going on, what three properties did today's buyers plump for? Let's find out. In Stoke-on-Trent, Dion's on the case of the missing houses. We've been knocking on a few doors and they know exactly why these houses aren't here. What kind of damp has Jackie come across in Battersea? Wow, that is serious damn. And Dion needs a fire guard in Wallasey. That's not such a good start. I feel as I'm falling into the fireplace. There's a bit of a fall there. All these properties have been sold at auction and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. You bought it. Off now to the historic epicentre of world-famous potteries, Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire and this suburb of Mere, where in November 2020, Dion saw an auction lot unlike the rest of its residential neighbours. It's not a house and it's not a flat. It's actually this piece of land and a good-sized piece of land it is as well. If you can believe it, at the auction house, the guide price was £20,000 for this. Yes, £20,000 doesn't get you much in the property stakes these days. So what was going down with this plot, measuring 0 0.07 acres and its relatively low guide price? What I can tell you about this plot of land, having done my research, of course, is that it did come with planning permission. Unfortunately, that planning permission has lapsed, but it was for two separate dwellings. Now, if you want to take on this particular plot, you're going to have to start from the very beginning when it comes to planning. But that said, if planning permission was granted last time, there's no reason why you couldn't get planning permission granted again but it is very much a start from the very beginning and see what you can achieve. Getting planning approval is rarely guaranteed, but if you did get it, what was next? So building a house on a plot of land should be relatively easy, but there's a few issues you have to overcome first, and one of those is usually access to the plot of land itself, and then getting rid of all the rubble, skips, all those problems have to be solved first before you start to lay any foundations whatsoever. And don't forget, utilities, your gas and your electrics and your water, where's all that going to come from? Well, in this situation, it's all around you, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yes, due to the residential setting of the plot, several new build obstacles were already more or less overcome, but we still didn't really know much about how the plot came to be empty. Now, I do know this is an old coal mining area, so could it be down to subsidence? If so, the subsidence was that bad, they'd had to get rid of these houses. And the only way to find out why these houses aren't here is to do a bit of research. My first port of call would be knocking on a few doors, asking the neighbours a few questions, because I can guarantee there'd be a few people around here that have been living here a long time and they'd know exactly why these houses aren't here. It's the people that know, so ask the people. Tell me why. Chinwag with the neighbours about the plot's history was a good place to start. And once you had your answers, it would be time to talk money. 
Many standard lenders won't lend on land, so it would be a cash purchase, or you'd need a specialist mortgage, such as a self-build mortgage, or if you were a developer, a commercial development mortgage. Let's get it right, this is a good sized plot of land. You'd get two houses on it very easy, and it's in a really nice area. Whoever takes this plot of land on is gonna need to have a decent sized budget, the know-how when it comes to building houses, and who's willing to do the research to find out the mystery of the missing houses. Let's find out who'd done their bit of detective work when he went under the hammer. This was a popular lot on the day, with beds going back and forth between several interested parties. You bought some other. But it was bought by Showbit and wife slash business partner Richa from Derby for £31,000. He'd been on the show before when he'd met Martin during a property refurbishment in the area, but their latest acquisition was an altogether larger project. So what did they have planned? Well, it's given us an opportunity to build up uh, from ground up, and uh, it's going to be a new modern semi-detached house, two semi-detached houses, with parking in, in the front and brand new gardens and everything brand new in the houses. Were you looking for land? We were looking for opportunities and this one uh, came up. So yes, we were looking for land. Was it in this particular area? Stoke is something which we invest in quite actively. So this area was known to us. We have a few properties in and around this area. So this, uh, this is an opportunity we were looking for. Okay, have you done any research in the area? Yes. Why this plot of land? Oh, you have, I like that, yes, I like yes. Tell me, tell me. Right, this, uh, this particular plot of land, uh, there used to be houses about 80 years back on this. And I think uh, coal, coal Authority had to buy those uh, houses off and uh, demolition just convert this into a piece of land. OK, so what's your plan then? Uh, have, you, have you checked into, you know, rebuilding here and...? Yes, we have got the planning on this one. OK. They used to be planning on this uh, till about two years back, but then it expired and uh, we, we got the new planning now. So that new planning is uh, basically for two semi-detached, as in a pair of semis. And uh, we are just waiting for the final conditions to be taken off, and then I think we are good to go. And the planning conditions were stringent, requiring a mining report to be obtained, getting council approval for the building materials used, as well as ensuring the ground was stable enough to avoid any further subsidence in the future. We are working with the structural team, uh, structural uh, engineering team, and they have come up with a design for uh, the foundations. And that will make sure that uh, nothing of that sort happens. So who's going to build the houses for you? Have you got a team of builders that travel with you? Or? I mean, it's a builder who has worked for us uh, on other projects as well. And they have the capacity to make new houses as well. So I think that's, that's it's, a, it's, a, it's a team local to us where we live. So they will be traveling from uh, Derby to this place to build houses. Give us some numbers then on um, how much, <clears throat> how much first and foremost it will cost you hmm. to build the two houses. What is your budget? The budget is uh, somewhere in the region of 150 to 170 for just to build up the houses, it, like to, ready to be moved in. As far as the uh, selling goes, we are looking at about uh, 150 per per dwelling, so about 300 ish, I would say, for the whole development to go. What about the time scale? How long is it going to take to get them done and finished? Um, once we get the planning uh, approved and everything good to go, I think it should be well, well within uh, 12 months for us to start and finish. Showbit was optimistic, however. When we returned 10 months later, it was clear things hadn't progressed quickly, but building was finally underway. So what caused the hold-up? We spent one full year getting the planning sorted. And uh, once the planning was done, we had a few more conditions has to be had to be removed. So once the condition was removed, then I think it was just a matter of just starting off. Having moved on from those frustrating times, building had commenced two months prior to our visit. So how would things look once finished? It, it'll be a typical three-bed uh, 
semi-detached layout wherein you have uh, the kitchen, the lounge, and a cloakroom on the ground floor. On the first floor, you will have all the bedrooms and the family bathroom. For the back of the house, uh, this is going to be the garden. On the left is your uh, alleyway to, to take out your bins, and this door is the access to the kitchen. And the property does come with the, the parking on site, so you, you don't have to park on the street. It all looked good on paper, but turning it into a reality wasn't easy. Although there had been houses here previously, there had been concerns over the land suitability to build on. So how did they overcome that issue? It was a challenge. We removed about 20 truckloads from here of uh, soil. And um, it's, as you can see, it's on an incline. So the foundation, our uh, uh, engineering teams and the architect, they worked together with the builder. And they had the new foundation sorted out for this kind of a um, inclined surface. With the build finally progressing, Shobit believed the project would be complete in just four months' time, almost in keeping with his original timescale. But was he managing to stay within his 150 to 170,000 pound budget? We have spent close to 90k so far, and I think we are just midway as far as uh, our budget is concerned. So I think we should be well within the budget. Um, fingers crossed if the material uh, price uh, doesn't go up. Well, good luck, Shobit. Join us later in the show to see if everything on this project falls into place. London now and sitting on the south bank of the River Thames is Battersea. Famous for its power station and dog and cat home, Battersea is only a few miles from the heart of the city, making it a desirable spot to pick up some London property. Well this might look like a residential area but Clapham Junction Station is a mere five-minute walk away with all its neighbouring shops, bars and restaurants. Now, the property I'm here to see is through these gates and it is this block. Now, the property is a first-floor flat, it's one bedroom and had a guide price of £210,000 plus. Let's take a look inside. And you might be close to the river, but it's the railway you see from the first floor flat. A few minutes' walk will take you to Clapham Junction Overground Station with regular trains to Victoria and Waterloo stations. Right, so... Decent-sized hallway. Central heating, that's great. Then you've got the bathroom here. What? Wow. That is serious damp. i definitely, obviously, get that looked at. And whilst you're at it, a new bathroom suite. And as we carry on down, you've got, oh, really big storage there. You've got your intercom system there, leading into your bedroom, a decent size. The floors actually run all the way through with that really nice and solid. Double glazing. Uh, oh, another cupboard. Two cupboards side by side. Very good. And then into your living room. Now, this is a decent size. As I look up, more signs of damp. It looks like it's dried up a bit, so it could be historic, but definitely get it checked. As any flat dweller will tell you, a waterfall from above isn't fun and there's not much you can do to prevent it, but you can be a good neighbour and prevent your utilities from leaking. If buying a new appliance, either get it professionally installed or make absolutely sure you know what you're doing before switching it on. Now, the kitchen isn't a bad size. It's not the largest of kitchens, but it's workable. But if you wanted something modern and sleek, then, of course, you just rip it out and start all over again. But actually, I had another thought. Could you turn this one-bedroom flat into two bedrooms? Hear me out. I'm thinking that cupboard in the hallway, 
take up that space, use that door as your way into your second bedroom, second bedroom here, block this doorway off, move the kitchen into the living room so you create kitchen, living, dining, because there's enough space to accommodate that. There's an option. Options to add value inside and outside. How's this for a Battersea bonus? Your very own car parking space within the gated area. Now, even if you don't drive, you could lease out your space to bring in a few extra quid. Time now to hear from a local estate agent about what he thinks of this one-bed flat guided at £210,000 plus. This particular flat is primed for redevelopment. Uh, good proportions, excellent proportions in fact throughout, uh, could easily be reconfigured to create a two-bedroom flat, bringing the kitchen into the reception room, which would certainly add some value. I'd suggest, based on the, the capital value of the flats in the block, a fairly standard finish throughout, nothing too high-end. So how much value could an extra bedroom add, firstly in terms of rental income? So I'd suggest once the works are completed, the property would generate a monthly income of around £1,450. If you were to reconfigure it as a two bedroom, that could see the number increase to around £1,800 per calendar month. I would suggest the property's value as a one bedroom would be in the region of £350,000 after the works are completed. However, if you could reconfigure it as a two bed, that figure should potentially increase to the region of £400,000. Well, this is a great flat in a great location. And once that damp issue is sorted, then it's really only cosmetic work needed here. Unless you'd like to turn this one-bed flat into a two-bed, then, of course, that's a bit more work. Let's see who fancied it when it went under the hammer. This property was sold at an internet auction with bids being made online. Sold. Paying £250,000 for the flat was Arjun. This is his very first property purchase. Jackie met up with him to find out what his plans are. Arjun, it's lovely to meet you and congratulations on this place. Thank you very much, Jackie. Yeah, great to meet you too. Are you happy with the price that you paid for this property? I am. Um, yeah, when I was at the auction, mm. the ones before were going like almost double the guide price and this one had kind of been consigned to the fact I might not be getting it, but then, yeah, when, when um, it happened, I only went, like, 20 grand above, which was within my budget, which is, yeah, great. So was that your first property purchase? Yeah, never bought anything before. Uh, <gasps> first time buyer. Decided to go yeah, all in at the auction and... What made you want to do that? My dad's always kind of nudged me towards it a little bit. I've always kind of kept my side eye on it, and I saw this come up and was like, OK, I'm going to bite the bullet and go for it. Wow. Yeah. So you talked about your dad there. Um, so your dad's into property. Have you worked on any of his projects with him? Not too many. I don't think he trusts me. But <laughs> <laughs> he does have a small... I think I did do the flooring, like I helped one of his uh, regular builders once. Okay. I think that was more of a punishment than anything. <laughs> but, no, not too much hands-on stuff. What's your dad's name? Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. OK, it's all thanks to Aaron. Yeah, then. yeah, he'll love that. <laughs> 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 inflate his head a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> so why this particular property? You mentioned that you live not too far away, but why this flat in this block? First of all, I thought the price was pretty low for, for the location. It's like five minute walk from Clapham Junction. Yeah. A commuter's dream, actually. And yeah. So yeah, I came around to see it thinking it'll be an absolute mess, but yeah, it was in pretty good nick. Yeah. I mean, well, apart from the damp in the bathroom, yeah. ceiling there, and then a little bit of damp here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have, did, so did you visit the property before the I auction? did, I did. The, the, the bathroom looked better when I visited it. The, really? The light was still intact then, so when I came around when I had the keys and had a look up, I was like, oh, OK, this is a bit more than I bargained for here, but yeah. I did have someone in have a look at it, and right. we've been upstairs now, so... It is just a pretty simple leak that's been fixed on the bathtub. What are your plans for this flat? Um, so, yeah, the bathroom, definitely. Completely yeah. fresh uh, set up. Mm. Get rid of the bath, get a shower in there. 
the kitchen, I'm going to freshen that up as well, probably get some new units. And the rest of it, I think, just a, just a lick of paint. But I was thinking that you could probably turn this into a two-bed by making the kitchen a bedroom with the door access in the hallway, block this off, and then have a kitchen living dining here. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. I hadn't thought about that at all. I know that another, another flat in this block did just turn it into a two-bed, but they kept the kitchen there and got rid of the, the lounge space, which I'm not really a fan of. No. I think yeah. you, want, um, you want somewhere to relax, I think. OK. But, yeah, not, I think that's a, a bit of a bigger piece of work if I was going to take that on, and my budget might go up a little bit. What is your budget for this uh, refurbishment? I'm looking at about 15 to 20 grand. Um, yeah. Yeah, depending on, like, what quality I, I go for with the finishing. Yeah, so what are you looking for? Are you looking for a high spec? Are you looking for just a standard? Or... I think it's going to be, like, a pretty decent spec. Mm. Um, I am semi-tempted to move in here myself, so... Are you? Maybe I might step it up a little bit there, but, yeah, we'll see. So what's your background, then? If property isn't your background, what is it that you do? Um, I work as a data scientist at the moment. Wait. <laughs> What is it that you do? I get this a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I do this at a charity, and effectively, we've got, like, a lot of data on all our kind of fundraiser people, all our supporters, and it's yeah, our job to, to use, like, kind of statistics to figure out which of our products to best market at the right uh, supporters. Wow. Which, yeah, it's pretty fun. So, being a data scientist, which you obviously enjoy, um, and very rewarding, I'm, I'm sure, but then stepping into the property game, what's your hope for the future? Where will we see you in five years' time? If this goes well, maybe this could turn into more of a full-time kind of endeavour. But I do enjoy my side job. On, well, my side job, my real job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my side job right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, hopefully, hopefully this goes well and I'll... Yeah. Maybe becoming a full-time property developer, who knows? You never know. So who is going to do the work? Are you going to get your hands dirty? Probably not. I'm probably just going to get a contractor into I've had a few recommendations from friends who live quite nearby. Yeah. Maybe I'll do some painting, but I might end up devaluing it if I, if <laughs> I do it. What about timescale? How long will this take you to make it nice? Um, the work itself should take around four weeks, I think. Four weeks, yeah. Contractors are pretty stacked at the moment, so I don't want to get the right one in, so I'm thinking maybe within three or four months the whole thing should be done. And, well, anyway, you're not sure if you're going to be living here. Exactly. It'll give me some time to figure out what I actually want to do with the place. Well, look, I wish you the very best of luck and uh, congratulations once again. Thank you very much. It's been lovely meeting you. Thank you. So, this is Arjun's first property purchase and his first foray into property development. It's certainly different from his day job, but it's great that he's had a bit of experience working on family projects. But as yet, he hasn't found contractors to do the work here and he's got that damp to sort out. You can find out later in the show how he gets on and whether he decides to make this his home. Coming up, Dion visits a totally cracking house in Wallasey. You can see a bit of a crack there as well. There's a crack on either side, and there's a crack on this side. While poor Arjun doesn't know what to think in Battersea. That's throwing a sparrow in the works, actually. I, I don't know what I'm going to do next now. It's time to head back to Stoke-on-Trent and the suburb of Mere. When we first visited this lot in 2020, it was just a piece of land with a guide price of £20,000. What I can tell you about this plot of land, having done my research, of course, is that it did come with planning permission. Unfortunately, that planning permission has lapsed, but it was for two separate dwellings. The site was just waiting for someone to come along and bring it to life. And that person was Showbit, who bought it for £31,000, along with his wife, Richa. And they knew exactly what they were going to do with it. It's going to be a new, modern, semi-detached house, two semi-detached houses, with parking um, in the front and brand new gardens and everything brand new in the houses. And when it came to planning permission, Showbit seemed confident everything would run smoothly. 
Yes, we have got the planning on this one. Okay. They used to be planning on this uh, till about two years back, but then it expired, and uh, we we got the new planning now. So that new planning is uh, basically for two semi-detached, as in a pair of semis. Shobit and Richa hope to have the houses built within a year, with a budget of around 150 to 170 thousand pounds. But when we returned 10 months later, things hadn't run as smoothly with planning as the couple had hoped, and building had only just got underway. We spent one full year getting the planning sorted. And uh, once the planning was done, we had a few more conditions has to be had to be removed. So once the condition was removed, then I think it was just a matter of just starting off. Well, the building work had started and the houses were starting to take shape. Each property was going to be laid out as a typical three-bed semi, with the kitchen and lounge taking up the majority of the ground floor and three bedrooms and a bathroom on the first floor. And although there were delays with planning, Shobit hoped that in another four months, the job would be finished. Well, we're back eight months later to see the final result. Each house has two parking spaces to the front, which is a massive bonus. We only had access to one of the properties, but with the two being a mirror off each other, the layout of both is exactly the same. As you walk into the front door, you have a lobby. On the right is uh, the cloakroom. On the left is a big kitchen, a modern kitchen. Then you walk through, that's uh, the lounge. And as you go up, you have uh, the three bedrooms plus the family bathroom. And to the back, there's a good-sized garden. Now that Shobit can reflect on the overall project, what were the main challenges? Challenges, uh, not many, I would say. Uh, though, obviously, material prices and the availability was a bit of a challenge. But other than that, I think utilities, they getting the utilities in the house was uh, kind of, uh, it took us a bit of time. But other than that, I think it was a simple, straightforward thing. Well, there may have been a few issues along the way, but he sounds happy with the end result. What are Shobit and wife Richa most pleased with? I think we are pretty happy with the, what our building team has done. And the whole whole team as such, I mean, not just the building team, it's the whole, whole uh, from the council planners to the architects, our project manager, of course, and uh, other uh, surveyors involved in the, prop in the whole development. With a super dream team. Hey. Yes, a key requirement for any property developer is to have a good, reliable team around them, which Shobit and Richa are proud to say they do. With a super dream team. At the beginning, they had a time scale of one year, and as it turns out, the construction itself only took around seven to eight months. But it was delays with planning and material supplies that caused the time scale to slip by around five months. Shobit had an original budget of 150 to 170,000 pounds, and when we last visited the lot, he had spent 90,000. So how much did he spend in the end? We have touched close to 180,000 on the build. So the total expense, including the surveys, the fees, uh, the purchase, it's about 230,000. So I think we have gone slightly over budget, but uh, I think we can all appreciate the fact that it's been, uh, the build prices have gone up, and the material prices have gone up, so that's, that's the thing. Well, considering the circumstances and the end result, that isn't too much of an overspend. But will the extra spending have been worth it? We've asked back the expert from the auction house that sold it and viewed the site previously to get his thoughts and values on the finished project. Well, it's nice to see that the developers carried this through with a nice quality job with quality finishes throughout that's going to be quite attractive in the marketplace, I think. And what would he say makes these properties appealing to the market? 
The key selling points are the fact that it's a new build in an area where there aren't many new homes and also the bedrooms are, are quite large, perhaps larger than some of the traditional houses and also on a street where parking's very tight, these houses have two parking spaces each off the road which is going to be a big plus point. So the expert is impressed with the transformation here, but what does he think the potential returns could be, starting with the sales figures? Since I was last here, there has been an improvement in the market, and I would be recommending putting these with a guide price of offers over £190,000, with perhaps achieving in excess of £200,000. Yeah, we are, uh, that's what we are eyeing, and I think uh, we will achieve it. We have had a few viewings on the property and a few offers as well, which are very close to that mark. If both houses sell for around the expert sales figure, this could result in a pre-tax profit of around £170,000 for Showbit. And although he has no plans to put the property on the rental market, perhaps the agent's figure could change his mind? In rental terms, my estimate would be probably £800 to £850 per calendar month. Um, rental is something which we have not thought of, so, I mean, if we can achieve, then that's fine, but that's something which, we, which is not the part of the game. That yield of 4.4% hasn't tempted Showbit into renting, and considering there are a couple of offers on the table already, the houses could be sold very soon. How's he feeling now it's all done and dusted? It's been a challenging experience but uh, and the end result has given us uh, the boost and an experience of doing more and 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 the hunger to achieve more in the northeastern corner of Wirral sits the town of Wallasey one of the biggest towns on the entire peninsula and one that's located at the mouth of the river Mersey offering fantastic panoramic views out to sea Today's property isn't far from the town centre and has great transport links, whether it be by train, bus or ferry. The property I'm here to see is on this long terrace street. It is a mid-terrace. It's got two bedrooms. Here it is. And when it went to auction, had a guide price of £20,000. Yes, you heard me right. £20,000. Let's have a look. Right. We are straight into the front room with really nice high ceilings, which is a good start. That's not such a good start. I feel as I'm falling into the fireplace. There's a bit of a fall there. Nice big bay window. It does need to be decorated and painted and everything in here. The floor needs to come up. We've got a cupboard in the middle of this room as well, which is, OK, an old uh, fuse board. That's not ideal, having a big cupboard so close to the door in your front room. You can see a bit of a crack there as well. In fact, if you follow me this way, there are your stairs going to your bedrooms, but there's a crack on either side of the stairs in exactly the same place. And there's a crack on this side of the, uh, of the wall as well. As we come into the kitchen, which is a nice size kitchen. All this for me, again, if you take it all out and start from scratch, put yourself a brand new kitchen, it will brighten up the place. The window there has, I think that might be, oh no, it's not. I thought that window had blown. That is OK. I think you'd get away with keeping that, give it a bit of a clean. See another crack over there. There's a bit of storage there, but I can see a crack underneath the stairs. Wow. At the moment, it's a cracker, but not in a good way. Cracking up. I'm getting ready to go. Had enough. I can take any more. There are a fair few cracks downstairs. They may well just be settlement cracks that won't cause any issues, but they could be a sign of subsidence, so best get them checked out by an expert. OK, so we are upstairs and we are straight into the front bedroom. It's a double bedroom. But what hits you in the face is uh, that wall there at the front, the surrounding the bay window has uh, been freshly plastered and, and a nice bit of work too. But what about the rest? Yeah. Are they hiding something or has the work started? Which I'm hoping it's the latter. Get this place cleared out, take the carpet out, get it decorated, and I think you'd have a nice front bedroom. But I can see another crack in that corner. Not looking good at the moment. 
right over the landing and onto this side of the house, family bathroom and another bedroom. I'm finding myself, my eyes are drawn to corners. I'm searching for cracks everywhere now. There is a crack there above the bath and the shower, whether they're related, I'm not too sure. Always, always get them checked out. The bathroom itself, it's not huge. I wasn't expecting it to be huge, but the sink, the toilet and the bath look okay, look pretty sturdy. If you're looking to rent this out, keep these as they are, just give it a good clean up. And then you've got this back bedroom, which is smaller than the front bedroom by some margin, maybe a single bed in here, maybe a nursery, maybe an office, I'm not too sure. Textured wallpaper, get it all off, smooth it all down, put some fresh wallpaper on the walls, get it painted. And this would be a pretty nice bedroom, new carpets as well, obviously. And you've got a void space here, but you've got a rail on that side, and you've got a rail on that side, it's obviously a, uh, it's a walk-in wardrobe. It's fair to say this house needs some attention. Unfortunately, we couldn't access the rear of the property. But looking through the windows, it doesn't appear to be a big space. But with a tidy up, it could be a nice little outside area. We've asked along a property expert to get his thoughts on the house and what would be best to do with it. My initial thoughts on the house are that it's a typical mid-terraced two-bedroom house, would very much suit a buy to letter. Uh, won't cost an arm and a leg to make it right. Um, and if they buy it at the right price at auction, then it could end up being a good little cash uh, generator for them. Is there anything in the property that could be a potential problem? Having looked around the house, um, there's one thing that does concern me. Around the centre of the house, uh, the mid-stairway, uh, there's clearly evidence of diagonal cracking, which usually means that there's some sort of structural issue that needs a little bit of investigation. I think it's really crucial, absolutely vital, in fact, that the buyer uh, engages a proper structural engineer to do a comprehensive report. That needs to be done before you start any other works. Well, fingers crossed it won't be a huge issue for the buyer. Once the property has been renovated, what could the returns be? So if the property was renovated to a high standard, it would rent for around about £550 per calendar month or sell on the open market for around about £85,000 to £90,000. So my only issue with this place is the cracks. They are everywhere. It could be subsidence and it could cost you a few quid. That said, after buying a brand new kitchen, you have got good central heating double glazed windows, the layout works, and it comes with a guide price of 20 grand. Let's find out what happened when it under the hammer. This lot was sold at a remote property auction with bids taking place online. One, two, three, and gone, online. The successful bid of £90,000 was made by Barbara. Barbara is a social worker, but has had some experience renovating another property, which just so happens to be next door. Let's find out her plans for this one. Barbara, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Dion. Um, were you looking for somewhere like this, in this area? I was, actually, yes. Yes, I've, um, I've been looking at many properties locally. Good on you. But this one came available and I thought I'd go for this. And I've, and I've, and I've seen lots of cracks. Are they worrying you at all? Absolutely not. No, I've had somebody in and they're all superficial, so don't be worrying about them. Good, good. Um, what about yourself? What do you do away from buying property at auction? OK, well, my trade is I'm a social worker. I've got over 15 years' experience and I own and manage a parenting assessment unit with my colleague Elaine, who can't be here today, unfortunately. We house up to four families. Um, they stay with us for 12 to 14 weeks and we provide um, a tailor-made education programme in respect of um, supporting them through the baby's basic care needs. Um, after um, 12 to 14 weeks, so the plan would be for them to continue living in the community, um, still accessing our service, and that's why I bought this project for them to move on to. I mean, that's got to be so rewarding, by the way. Let me get that out of the way. That's got to be so rewarding. When do you get the time to do this? Because that sounds as though you're incredibly busy. It's a, it is a, it's a very, very busy job, but this is sort of my... Um, this is what I just love to do. I just get excited <laughs> with properties, <laughs> architecture. I absolutely love really? it. Really? I own the property next door and I've renovated that one. My son and myself part own it. We've renovated okay. that. I knew the area. I knew what the house was like, so I had to have this property. 
Were you happy with what you paid for this property? That's the thing. I am, absolutely. I paid well over the odds with all the um, charges on top. It was, it's probably come up to about 96 and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. The properties in the road are probably worth between um, 70, 85. Mm -hmm. There's one going for 90 down the road. That's got everything done. It's beautiful. But this is not about the money. It's about, um, from a business perspective, it's worth far more to us from a business perspective. Obviously, we need planning permission to change the usage from residential to business. If it doesn't happen, we'll rent it out. It's mm -hmm. not the end of the world. We'll rent it like that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's helping people, isn't it? Yeah, That's absolutely. what it is, helping absolutely. human beings yeah. to have a good life, isn't it? It's about it? helping them to live independently yeah. in the community. So, Barbara, have you looked into planning then? Have you, have you asked the question? Do you know how long it'll be? I've sort of... Um, done a bit of inquiring, yes, but the planning application hasn't gone in yet, but it's, uh, it's good to go. Barbara has a budget of £5,000 and a timescale of three months. She hopes to stick to her budget, but isn't worrying too much about the money side of things, as the end goal here is to create a great home for a new family in supported accommodation. So we know the cracks aren't a problem. Um, where are you going to spend your money? What needs to be done in your eyes? OK, what needs to be done is I need to put a partition wall up in here to separate the hall from the lounge. Just to create, create kind of corridor? Kind of corridor. Okay. It'll be a bit more safe as well, mm. and it'll have a door into this little lounge. It'll be, it's going to be small, but you can get furniture to fit. Um, the kitchen's going to need completely ripping out and redoing, but I'm going to buy a second-hand one, because I like to sort of put money back in the community. If people are selling second-hand stuff, if it's good, it's giving them a few bob in the pockets, it's helping us, so it's a win-win. New carpets throughout, liquor paints, good to go. Bathroom's OK, isn't it? Bathroom's fine, yeah. Might take yeah. off some of the tiles because they're odd. Yeah. Or just paint them all so okay. they all match. No, I think, good. I think the bathroom's OK, to be yeah. fair. It's quite, it's kind yeah. of stur sturdily done, so yeah. to speak, so you can yeah. keep that. Um, who's going to do this work for you? I've got a chap who's um, really handy, so... Yeah, You've got a chap? I've I love chap, that! Yeah, so he's <laughs> working next door at the moment, doing a few more jobs, and then he'll move over to here. Fantastic. So. so it's more or less a cosmetic refurb from what you've told me, apart from, you know, brand new kitchen and stuff. Everything's going to be new floors and painting Absolutely, and yes. curtains and stuff like that. Nothing major apart from the partition wall with okay. the door on it. Good, good. Yeah. You've got a chap that's going to do that for you? Yes. Let's give him a name check while he's on TV. Come okay. on, what's his name? Okay, um, what's his name? Graham. Graham, okay, Graham. Graham. Good luck, Graham, because you've got your work cut out. I like that. Yeah. Uh, out the back. Out back. the back. We haven't got a key to get in the backyard at the moment, but I've been out there many times before, so I need to get um, the locks changed on the back to get a fresh key. Um, there's lots of um, like wooden buildings out there. It's only a tiny backyard, and we need to knock all that down and get rid of it. Okay. Replaster the walls. It'll be a little sun trap. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can see... you. you you're, you're, you're brimming with pride and you've got a big heart and you keep giving back and giving back yeah. and it's not yeah, about the money. About. Is this going to just continue to roll out and roll absolutely, out? Absolutely, absolutely. And if we can get more properties, we will. I might buy my sons off him next door <laughs> and have another one. Who knows? Who knows? Well, listen, um, I want to wish you all the best. I think Thank what you're you. doing is a really good thing. Thank you. Keep that, keep that going, pal. I think mm, people certainly. are relying on you. Yeah. Good on I'm you. I'm not retiring yet. So. Plenty of time, plenty of time. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you very much. Now, there's a lady with a big heart. Barbara knows she's paid over the odds and she's still got to pay a few more quid to get this place turned around. But it's not about the money for Barbara. It's about making people's lives better. Enough said. You can find out how she gets on later in the program. Earlier, we saw how one property turned out, but what about the other two? There should have been some work done, but you never do know. Yeah, all sorts of problems can crop up. Let's find out what today's buyers had to deal with. Jet plane headed up to the sky. Back now to Battersea on the south bank of the River Thames to see a one-bed flat that was a few minutes' walk from Clapham Junction. So take me back to London. The property was in good condition, but there were some surprises. Wow, that is serious damp. I definitely, obviously, get that looked at and checked. And while you're at it, a new bathroom suite. There were also some big decisions to be made by any potential buyer. Could you turn this one bedroom flat into two bedrooms? Move the kitchen into the living room so you create kitchen, living, dining, because there's enough space to accommodate that. There's an option. This smart first floor one bed flat had a guide price of £210,000 and was purchased by Arjun. He was a first time buyer, but had the support of his dad who had experience in property development. So take me back to London. 
And so how was the auction for you? Exciting. I've never been to one online before. I've been to one in real life with my dad ages ago, but um, I saw this come up and was like, OK, I'm going to bite the bullet and go for it. Well, are you looking for a high spec? Are you looking for just a standard? Or... I think it's going to be like a pretty decent spec. Mm. Um, I am semi-tempted to move in here myself. So are you? Maybe I might step it up a little bit there, but yeah, we'll see. Despite being undecided about making this a home or renovating as an investment, Arjun planned to investigate the signs of damp, replace the bathroom and update the kitchen, as well as decorating throughout. He didn't have a builder in place, but hoped the work could be completed in around four months and cost between 15 to 20,000 pounds. We're back six months later and the renovation is now finished. Inside, the property has remained a one-bedroom flat. The walls have been painted, the skirting boards replaced, and the doors have been sanded and painted white. As a one-bed, it does provide quite a nice bit of space for perhaps a single occupant or a couple um, with a bit more space to maybe work from home as well. So I thought the two-bed might detract from a few of those. The living room has been given a freshen up too and the signs of damp on the ceiling are now a distant memory. But what about the bathroom? You might remember there was some damp in the ceiling which needed to get dealt with pretty quickly. Fortunately, the flat owner upstairs was great to deal with. He sorted it out pretty quickly. It was just a small bit of silicon around his bathtub and then after that got replastering the ceiling and we're all happy days. I look at it and I do think, I am tempted to live here. For now, I think I'm going to rent it out and test the market, see what I get from it. But perhaps down the line, when I'm ready to live by myself, uh, I might move in here. And you can see why he might be tempted with the transformation of the kitchen. Arjun had originally planned on just replacing the units, but instead opted for a full replacement with a laminate worktop and new modern appliances. It did take me a long amount of time to find what kind of kitchen I wanted, design it. The work itself took five weeks, as I expected initially. Um, it took me a little while to find a builder to come in. Um, I settled on a builder that I got along with pretty well and gave me a pretty reasonable quote. So uh, it took a few months for him to come in and get rid of his previous backlog. And then after that, the work was pretty smooth sailing. And was Arjun tempted to follow in his father's footsteps and get hands-on with the renovation? It was mainly project management that I did for this job. Also a bit of manual labour, bringing up the building materials. Um, thankfully, we're only on the first floor here because carrying those tiles from the bathroom was uh, pretty tiring. This is the first property Arjun has bought and the first renovation he's had to tackle. So was he able to stick to his original budget of 15 to 20,000 pounds? I just came in under 20 grand, so that was great. Um, which is perfect actually because I had budgeted to pay for the flat maybe 30 grand more. So overall, um, I'm pretty happy with the amount I paid for the whole development. Time to see if Arjun's hard work and investment has paid off. We've invited back the local estate agent who viewed this lot on our first visit to get their thoughts and valuations. Having had a look at the flat, I feel the changes have enhanced the value of the property quite significantly. Um, it's a nice finish throughout. Uh, they've chosen neutral colours, neutral finishes. Um, by and large, it's, it's a vast improvement. The property would certainly appeal to first-time buyers and the buy-to-let market, and there is huge demand in both those sides of the market at the moment. A booming market is always a good sign, but did Arjun miss a trick by not converting this property into a two-bed flat? Having not converted it into a two-bed naturally will cap the value of the property. However, the balance of the property is probably slightly better as a one-bed. Arjun is planning to keep the property as an investment and get tenants in. So what sort of rental income could he expect? In terms of rental figures, just given the condition of the property, I think it could be achieving around £1,800 per calendar month. That feels about in line with what I was expecting. I have chatted to people upstairs and they're paying that exactly on the dot. So, yeah, I think that makes sense to me and I'm pretty happy with that. That would be a pre-tax income of over £21,000 a year or a yield of 8%, including the cost of the renovation. But what about the property's resale value? 
I believe in the current market, the property could achieve somewhere between 400,000 and 425,000 pounds. That's actually a bit more than I'd expected. So yeah, that's throwing a spanner in the works, actually. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do next now. No wonder Arjun is now considering selling. The agent's top figure would leave him with an impressive pre-tax profit of £155,000. Either way, it's a great position to be in. But what does his property-developing father think about the renovation? Dad thinks it's all gone pretty well. He's been so helpful, actually, throughout the process. I've been firing him quite a few messages every few days with pictures of how things are going. Um, and he's come round, he's seen how, he's seen the finished project and he's pretty impressed himself. Uh, seeing that this one's gone so well and so smoothly, I definitely think I will dip into this again in the future. Maybe not immediately, I need to get back to my day job and have a bit more of a relaxed lifestyle, I think. But yeah, I definitely think there are some bargains to be had if you keep your eye out and do your reading and read the legal pack. head back to Wallasey in Merseyside now and this two-bed mid-terrace that had a guide price of just £20,000. Quite solid looking from the outside but inside proved to be a little less sturdy. That's not such a good start. I feel as I'm falling into the fireplace. There's a bit of a fall there. So possibly some loose joists and there were also alarming looking cracks throughout the property that would need further investigation. But some jobs had been started already. That wall there at the front, that surrounding the bay window has uh, been freshly plastered and, and a nice bit of work too. But what about the rest? Yeah, are they hiding something or? has the work started, which I'm hoping it's the latter. Paying £90,000 for it at auction with social worker Barbara. Along with her business partner, Elaine, they had bought the house in order to renovate it to be used as accommodation for families who need additional support. We provide um, a tailor-made education programme in respect of um, supporting them through the baby's basic care needs. After 12 to 14 weeks of the successful, the plan would be for them to continue living in the community, um, still accessing our service, and that's why I bought this project for them to move on to. Barbara and Elaine would have to apply to the council for change of use, as this technically would be for business use, as it was to be supported accommodation. They hoped that a budget of just £5,000 and an optimistic timescale of three months would have them up and running. Well, it's just under a year later and we're back. And the outside is looking great with a new lick of paint. Inside, a hallway has been created and there's now a cosy separate living area. The spongy floor has been fixed and a hard-wearing vinyl has been laid. And those concerning cracks are now gone. Barbara did tell Dion they had investigated and were historical, so that wasn't too big a job to sort. There's now some smart shelving and Wi-Fi set up for whoever moves in. There are also upgraded electrics and the meter has been moved to a more discreet and convenient area. The dated rundown kitchen now looks a million bucks, but it was actually second-hand from a neighbour and the tiles were left over from someone else's renovation. Barbara and Elaine love to recycle and reuse where possible. Upstairs, the upcycling continues with a second-hand bed and furniture. And the small room is now perfect for a baby or toddler, complete with, you've guessed it, a second-hand cot and furniture. The bathroom has been modernised. Barbara and Elaine have done a lot here, more than first intended and not just on the inside. When we bought the property, they had like a storage outhouse. So we knocked that down. We had to view end of the wall because that was, wasn't safe. And we're going to have some fake grass just so it's a little play area for the children to play and it's safe. We like to use recyclable items because you find quality lasts longer and people will only use items for a number of years and then they'll want to either give it away or get some money back on it. So we try and buy quality, but at a reduced cost. So it's more economical for ourselves. 
The place is looking great and almost ready to go, but there are still a few hoops to jump through with the relevant authorities before they can get their first family moved in. We were told initially we didn't need any fire um, equipment in the property. 12 months later, that was a complete turnaround and we were told we needed to put fire doors on, have fire lighting, change the banister. So at the moment, we're just changing the doors as we speak. We haven't quite done them all yet. Then we can send all the plans off to Ofsted. They can come out and approve us and hopefully we can be open for business very soon. This was a huge undertaking. Did the ladies have help along the way? A lovely chap called Graham who does the majority of the work here and his specialism is joinery but he turns his hand to absolutely everything plumbing electrics to a point and um, he's done really well he's been so reliable so dependable and he's a perfectionist he's a perfectionist yeah absolutely yeah we're delighted with him surely all of this wasn't done on their original five thousand pounds budget i think we end up spending around between 35 and 37,000. A lot of it was labour, because it's, it's been a labour of love, to be perfectly honest, this house. Um, but we bought a lot of stuff which we've upcycled, as you've seen. Um, but it's well worth it. We've spent way more than what we, we know the property is worth, but from a business perspective, it's well worth it. And we're giving back to the community as well and giving families their independence, which is so important to us. This has been a labour of love for Barbara and Elaine, and the values at this stage aren't necessarily the most important thing, but we've invited back the estate agent who saw it last time to get his thoughts. My overall impression of the property now is very pleasing. They've done really good things to it. I think they've spent the money carefully uh, and they've created a really nice uh, two-bedroom house. With a purchase price of £90,000 and a budget that soared to nearly £37,000, they've spent a total of around £127,000. If they chose to sell in the near future, how much could they expect for their investment? I would suggest that if it was put on the market, uh, the house could easily achieve around about £95,000. It's worth more to us as a business than what it is at the moment, price-wise. Um... So, as we know, the sales value at this stage doesn't mean much due to the long-term nature of the investment and the end goal of helping out families who need additional support. The rental figures are of more significance here. So what's the going rate on the rental market? I would suggest £550 a calendar month would be a fair price. Wow, that's, that's quite good, isn't it? Way more than yeah. that, though. That's yeah. really good. £550 per calendar month could see the pair achieving a 5% yield. So what are their hopes for the future? I'm hoping that the families are going to move in and think this is a lovely environment, it's really good community spirit, and for them to do what needs to be done and to be educated, to, for them to live an independent life and be free of services and to go on and to live in their own little community from here. When it comes to property developing, no matter how experienced you are, there's always new things that you can learn. And we'll have a lot more stories for you next time, so join us here on Homes Under the Hammer. Goodbye. Bye-bye.